first of all, I want to thank you, and I appreciate you taking out your time of your day. I know you guys are busy. Thank you. I was, I was watching a podcast Tommy had, and she said you guys had a, one investor that dropped 14 contracts on you. Yes. Yeah, yes. so, which yes. is a good thing, which right? It's a great thing. It's a great thing. It's a great thing, especially when they all close. You know, we right. love to close. We only love to close. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was, um, yeah, D- days get crazy. And, you know, this is typically our busiest time of the year is in the summer months because this is when everybody is wanting to move. You got kids out of school. And so this yep. is really a good transition period for people to actually, you know, um, get under contract and sell their homes or buy homes. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. So I'm going to try to do this, you know, this, it's going to be pretty much a little organic. Okay. Um, let me see here. Uh, so I got basic questions, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a loan officer, so I kind of understand the process, but right. it, you know, I would, would like for you to kind of go in depth, you know, kind of step by step. And I have some questions along the way. Okay. So, you know, again, thank, thank you, Miss Najari. It's Jerry, just Jerry London. Just Jerry. Just Jerry. The end is silent. The end okay. is silent. Okay. For the purposes London. of this conversation, for purposes of knowing my name, the end is silent. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Okay, let's so, jump right into it. Let's, let's just jump right in. So I know you're a lawyer. Yes. I'm assuming real estate lawyer, but you can correct me. Yes. So right now my practice area is is focused on real estate. I've done everything from criminal to immigration, but real estate is my primary focus. Okay. Yeah. And and I wanted to jump into that and I see the accolades. I see, you know, the accomplishments. Uh, This is, like I said before, is inspiring. Uh, I kind of know your why. Uh Uh-huh. I put the pieces together, you can kind of tell what your why is, but can you just explain, you know, why why you title? Know, start a title company? You know, you said it does so much more. Yeah. So, you know, um in any process, I, I obviously, especially the home buying process, you know, you, you you have people from all walks of life. And ever since I was um in, in college, real estate has always been something near and dear to my heart. More importantly, home ownership. And so um, I knew that being a realtor was likely not my cup of tea and I wasn't going to go be a loan officer. And so when I really started to look at like how I can be active in the real estate arena and also utilize my uh, license as an attorney, title was where it was at. And um, more importantly, seeing that the lack of African-Americans in the title business, um, not to mention in the space of of title in and of itself um, was very motivating for me. And so obviously um, we, you know, do business with any and all, but at the same time, you know, we didn't have, I I, I would say the portion of us who owns title companies who are African-American or people of color period, very much less than one percent yeah and so uh i i would say it's a half a percent and 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 that's sad because yeah. everybody buys homes and so um i decided to that that was going to be my goal was i was going to be one of the first one of the few african-american attorneys or african-americans who own a title company yeah yeah and you've done that and i've done that you're the only woman we see woman owned yes and minority owned title company in the in the entire state or Um, or is it north Texas? i i would say everyone i wouldn't say everyone but there are some popping up but i i i think i could say confidently attorney um black owned attorney owned in, in Texas. Gotcha. I believe there's one that's possibly um, up, but uh, I'm not for sure as far as like the ownership structure goes, but I am 100% owned by me. So there is no other partners. There's no, you know, minority partnership or someone else who has a say so. It's completely mine. <laughs> right. That That's great. And me in the mortgage business, that's kind of my why as well. For more M- uh, MLOs nationwide, not yeah. just the state, nationwide is maybe 10%. Yeah. Uh, so when I got into the mortgage business, I think the biggest thing is exposure, right? Exactly. You look at all the the uh, the things that go in the in the background 
mm-hmm. of a mortgage transaction, all these different jobs, as loan processors, you got your yep. underwriters, you know, you got your appraisers, you got, you know, title companies. Um, mm-hmm. And we're just not represented. We're not. You know, people we're not. of African descent are not represented in those areas. One reason is exposure. Exactly. And, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing. And I'm trying to get the word out there to people, you know. Um, yeah. You know, just not to jump off topic, but me personally, uh, being a loan officer, I've seen the need for appraisers. Yeah, very much so. so appraisers, um, even, you know, inspectors, but appraisers is a big one. And right. people... <sighs> You know, I, I used to say this um, when I was practicing on the criminal side and I, you know, tried cases and, you know, people would complain about, you know, how things would go and, you know, jury selection or they don't want to go to jury duty and they've been called for jury duty, you know, for this, you know, reason or another. And they would complain about that. But I'm like, well, you can't sit up here and complain about the result or outcome of a case if you're going to sit up here and complain about being on the jury you're needed at these places you're needed oh, definitely. These places so it again translates over to in the real estate field we're needed in these spaces there are certain things that we understand they're, they're the way that we comprehend things mm-hmm. Is different and having someone that can explain things on a level that it that they feel that okay I can understand what you're saying, it, it's 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 needed and it, and, yeah. and 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 that is so key in this real estate business because we don't have the exposure. You know, title is not something that's attractive. Like no one mm-hmm. goes and says, oh. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> go work at a title company. Yeah, you know? I'll be an escrow officer. Yeah, I'm, that's yeah, what I'm going to do when I grow up. Yeah, You know, no one ever thinks to do that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, so I'll be a real estate, you know, I'll be a real estate agent or I'll be a loan officer, but title company, because title is old. You know, I tell people all the time, title is old. Title is mm-hmm. old, old, old. You're, you're talking about land. Land has been here since the beginning of time. And so when you're dealing with something that's old, typically you find a lot of, you know, old people in the business. Yeah. <laughs> when you yeah. look at title companies, I mean, you can look at the personnel, the property, the, the young people that you really see are those persons who are actually, you know, the business development people, right. but the ones who are working. I mean, people, this is a field that people, a lot of times they get into it because um, they knew someone or they just happened to fall into it as a child and they've just been in it all their lives because right. a parent or some relative was involved. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing about title, I tell people this, title is so big. It's just not about, you know, oh, you come to our office to close in your house and then you, you know, you get your money. There are so many different nuances that happen within the title um, RAM and so many different processes that you may start out being a receptionist but you literally have so many other opportunities that may come along while you're within the business um and so i think that is really really key and should be attractive to a lot of people that title is just not one faceted like you can be an accountant and come to title because obviously we're dealing with you know, money every single day. Mm-hmm. Me being an attorney, the legal background, we're talking about legal documents that, you know, we have to sign in order to make the sale effective. Um, you 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 have so many different areas. You have marketing, you have business. So I would say it's really one of those fields that you can, you don't need a particular degree in mm-hmm. or a particular uh expertise background yeah background mm-hmm. but you can go in it and you can just flourish to whatever you want it to be great that sounds that sounds good and and, and i think that's where we got to put the glamour on it i mm-hmm. think you mentioned it real you know being a realtor or a broker yeah that's the glamour side that was those yep. are the advertisements those are the ones that you see showing these million dollar homes and whatnot but there's just so much work on the in, like I said in the background that needs to get done. Exactly. So, and it's key. And you're and you're a key process to that. I think it's important to understand that, hey, if we don't get this done, this can't get done. So the real estate. Right, right. Like, you can look at all the houses right. you want. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if it right. don't close, it don't close. It don't close. It don't close. Right. <laughs> so let's get into that. So okay. okay, so first step, you know, and I know the first step usually begins with, you know, a loan officer, hey. 
I need, a, I need what we call what an escrow open. What? How do we yeah, start? Yeah. This, so this typically, we we'll say yeah. So typically, what happens is obviously the contract has been executed. The lender, I mean, the agents send it over to our office, and then at that point, lenders like, hey, we need, we have a title request for you. That's typically the language they use, either open title or a title request. And so, pretty much, what that process is, or what they are looking for, is now they want the history of this particular piece of property mm -hmm. and so whenever we get the contract from the agents we automatically put it in our system and at that point we send it over to the examiners what the examiners do is they are looking at the history of the property to see what's on the property I mean they're looking back they're looking to see if they you know who owned the property and making sure that the the chain is what we call it, the chain of title mm -hmm. is clear that there is no gap no gaps yeah and what a gap is, is let's say um, there was two people in title, two people owned a home, only one person signed the deed, giving the property to the next owner, but they needed that other person. Well, because that, se that second person didn't sign a deed, it now creates a gap in title. And okay. so that's where, you know, we have to correct it or cure it, as we call so that way we can pass the property on or the property can sell with no defects to the next owner. And so the examiners, they examine the property looking for the past owners. They're also looking to see what mortgages on the property, if any liens or anything in regards to that property are looking for that. They're also even looking to see if people had any bankruptcies or any judgments against them, because that does come into effect depending on the type of judgment that the person has on them it will come into effect whether or not you know we have to pay it at closing or we can um do some other mechanism in order to remove it from the property and be able to close the file okay so those and, are those second liens that you're talking yeah you're those talking second about? liens yeah so let's say for instance somebody um got sued and ended up having a judgment against them and it, it, it's their home and so they're trying to sell their home but this judgment has now popped up well, we, we that that's going to appear on what we call the commitment, because that's pretty much where we're going to promise to issue title insurance. But this is what has to occur in order for us to do that. And so that's what the commitment like. That's the part of the title request that we sent to you. And, I, and I'm going to kind of go back a little bit because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something about title insurance insurance. What is title insurance? Because I don't think a lot yeah. of people know what that is. But they don't understand why do don't why do I have to pay that at closing? You know, they're like, I don't, I don't need this. I don't, I don't want this title insurance. And it's like, well, you do. Right. <laughs> you right. want it, um, because anything can happen. And the main reason what the the purpose of title insurance is, it is insuring you from things that have happened in the past. Unlike your medical insurance, car insurance, um, those insurances help you for things that may happen in the future. What title insurance does is protecting you from those things that have happened in the past. So whenever you're purchasing title insurance in a transaction, pretty much that is covering you if something comes up that wasn't taken care of at closing when you bought your property. And so that is what you're insuring. Now, do things happen? Do Is it used? Yes, it is used quite often because anything can happen. You can have a transaction that you may think is perfectly fine. Even let's just say if you new construction. Um, you buy the property and he's like, oh, mm -hmm. there's no one who's ever been in this home. This is a brand new home. We don't have any issues. Well, guess what? Ends up coming a year later after you bought your home, there was what they call a mechanics lien. The person who, the contractor who built the home didn't pay one of the subcontractors. And they're, they're coming after you because they're saying that, hey, you owe me money. Either you owe me money. I'm going to get a judgment against you. You're like, wow. wait a minute. But and so that's when title insurance kicks in and it goes and pretty much you'll contact the title company or the underwriter who issued the, the title insurance and you'll go through those necessary steps in order to get the claim and get that situation taken care of. So, so mm -hmm. got a question for you and just, you know, why, you know, didn't, didn't mean to stop you because, yeah, I'm listening. I'm taking all this. <laughs> it's interesting to me. The audience, some, some people in the audience may not, uh, you know, understand why we're so in deep in, into the right. process. So let's just say it doesn't go your way. OK, mm -hmm. let's just say the person that has a lien on the, on the property, you know, they win their, you know, their case or whatever the case that they're, they're saying. 
what are we insuring? Are we insuring uh, any money, any escrows that I put into the deal or? So what you do, okay. I just get that back and find me another house. Or? Nah, no, no. So, so what okay. ends up happening? Because, at, because also too, you're vesting in title. So even though there may be a claim to title or let's say a situation where, um, let's kind of go back to the, the example that I use in regards to there being a gap in title and or let's say there was an air situation or someone sold the property from someone else and they didn't get any money from it and so now they're saying hey i didn't authorize the sale y'all owe me some money well you own the house you know okay. you, you own the house you you have ownership so that part isn't taken away what now has to be remedied is this other person or this other party that's saying that they have some ownership or they have a right to this to land. What typically ends up happening is once you make your claim, you're going to have the title insurance, their attorneys are going to be pretty much you, uh, helping you in, in your case. And so typically what ends up happening is they'll negotiate with this other party with regards to a, a settlement amount. They'll pay them that settlement amount and then they're off mind of their business and now you have this remedy cured so you don't have to move out you don't have to buy another house it's still your house you just now have to remedy that situation through your title insurance and they'll work out a deal um an agreement with the i guess injured party in okay. the in the situation to make them whole and also to make you whole okay. to where now you don't have this outstanding issue coming knocking on your door steadily knocking at your door right saying that you, where's my key at <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. so how do you okay so you know that leads that answered one of my questions that i had on my list so so how does the title company connect uh collect those funds uh who's 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 receiving that money and you know so, a lot of people try to give money to me as a loan officer i said no don't write me a check i don't unless it's so my organization fee. because you know a lot of people don't realize is we're selling title insurance like it's like an, we're an insurance agent you know we don't like to say okay. it but we're, we're we're an insurance company we're just you know have a different type of insurance company and it's called title it's title company and what we do mm -hmm. is um we take you know whenever a transaction closes we take money from the lender if there's lender involved the buyer and then we disperse it out to the you know the sellers and so forth and so the money that you pay obviously you're paying the title company for their service but we're also paying money to the underwriter because they have to get compensated as well whoever's like writing the title policy so so to speak so okay. um typically most of all the money in the real estate transaction is going to buy the home and so it's going to the sellers and breaking up the proceeds that way okay so and it's you know and, and title insurance is not expensive it's only you know it's we always estimate as far as title fees and so forth we're talking about one percent of the transaction so okay. it's not that much and they actually had a reduction um a couple of years ago in in the cost for title insurance but title insurance is not um not not expensive at all and it's part of the closing costs that you will see on your closing um, statement um, with us and the lender, just like the lender has their fees, title company has their fees, but more, you know, it's no more than 1% one, 1 of the sales price. Okay. So that's, that's for the title insurance on itself. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the question that I do have in, in, in me, again, being a loan officer, I see it mm -hmm. in the loan estimate, I see it on the yeah. closure, disclosures. You know what? Are, what are these recording fees? I see a recording fee for this and a recording <laughs> fee for that. I well, mean, the, tie that together. For <laughs> well, the recording fees. So, what a lot of people don't understand is, or don't realize, a lot of the fees that title companies charge, quite a bit of them are pass through fees. So, they're fees that we get charged in order to actually close your transaction. And so, okay. a, a recording fee is a pass through fee. We have to pay the county to record any documents that needs to be recorded documents that must be recorded in every real estate transaction is going to be your warranty deed that is um, showing who owns the property and also deed of trust or any other documents that the lender may need us to record in order to secure their mortgage on the property so the recording fees or the deeds and the deed of trust 
that are needed to secure the land as being rightfully owned by the buyer and also the lien that the lender is going to have on the property for the mortgage on. And those fees are set by the county. So typically you'll still fee that's called an e-recording fee. That e-recording fee is anywhere between four to five dollars. That fee is the fee just to submit it through the service that we submit it through. And the two big um, e-recording services that we use are is either a simple file or SCS. And so that's their fee. The other fee, again, county fee, county charges typically they'll charge like 19 or 20 dollars for the first page and then four dollars for each additional page after that so as you see all of those fees are the fees that the county is charging so they're not fees that the title mm-hmm. company just takes and we pocket and we bag it and we like yeah we got our money we gone no nah, that's <laughs> that's going straight to the county oh wow okay yeah yeah that's good for people to know because you know you know, first thing they want to do, especially to me, they look at that, their loan estimate and say, hey, why are you charging me? This? Why? I say, hey, oh, exactly. I'm, not I'm, just like, Wait, I'm not charging you this. <laughs> I know. I, I know some people are like, well, can you reduce the uh, the title insurance? Nah. The, so and what thing people don't understand, especially when people come from other states and they buy a house in Texas. Texas is one of three states that have promulgated forms, which means our rates are set. There is no negotiating our rates. There is no saying that, oh, you know, you're going to give me a discount on a title insurance. Texas don't play that. Mm, there right. is no discount on title insurance. <laughs> so right. you got to pay that fee. That's the fee. That's it's the fee broken down it. based it's on the cost of the um, of the property. You know, it has like kind of a side scale. But if your home falls within this particular range, this is how much you pay for title insurance. And it's like that across the board. So I don't care what title company you close at that title insurance cost is going to be the same in every title every company time. in the state of Texas. All right. And that's determined from the property size and property location. Yeah. Well, not even property location. It's just determined on the cost of the home. Okay. That's the only thing that determines that is just the cost of the home. Wow. Okay. So yeah. all those legal documents, all the stuff that you have to submit to the county and the state, you guys are preparing all that, all, all those, those deeds. So mortgage. Yes. Yeah, so, or- we are texas again we we let it be special here in texas Mm -hmm. (laughs) um texas every document that is recorded has to be prepared by an attorney and so our office is unique in the fact that i am an attorney i can prepare i can prepare those documents but before you submit um your loan or submit documents for um, signing whether it be a lender um, involved transaction or a transaction that doesn't involve a lender. So we call that a cash transaction. An attorney must prepare those documents that are being sent to the county for recording. That's that attorney fee I see on there too. That's the attorney fee. Yes, okay, it is. Okay, got it. Well, again, that's a pass-through fee because I can't do it as NPR because NPR is not right. the uh, NPR is not the attorney. But, right. you know, Jerry London is the attorney, so Jerry London can charge that fee. And so you. whenever you see the attorney fee, that's what that fee is. Good, good, good deal. So what other um, what other value added can, does the title company give to the to the transaction as far as you know all parties involved? Um, any, main, any any additional any additional you know the thing main that thing the is security. Okay. I, I would say the sorry about that. That would say the main thing is security. Security to know that. If anything happens with my home in regards to a dispute with ownership or liens or anything like that, my title insurance is going to cover me. And a lot of people, I always say this, you don't know how much you need it until you need it. Mm -hmm. And we have seen transactions where they've decided, and I I have a transaction, um, it was about, about a year or so ago. It's very, very rare, but this was a you know, almost a million dollar transaction and they didn't want title insurance. They were adamantly opposed to title insurance. And I, I just didn't mm-hmm. understand why, <laughs> like why, and they weren't even paying for it. I was like, well, I don't want it, but why don't you want it? Like, this is going to protect you and you're not paying for it, but they were adamantly opposed to it. And, wow. you know, some people are like, I just assume the risk. And I'm just like, but why? And then we've had situations where they didn't think about buying title insurance or it was a situation where someone, oh, someone gave them this property, they gave me a good deal. We decided not to go through the title company. We just wanted to, you know, 
deal with it amongst us and you know we oh, wow. we uh -huh. no go ahead no, i was just saying wow oh uh, yeah and I don't understand and, that either. and then guess what they tried to go sell the property it was so many judgments and liens on that property and guess what they had to pay for it they had oh, wow. to remedy those so you know the get the good thing about title is you know generally speaking most of all of us we, we, we're, we're gonna you know do a good job to prevent to try our best to prevent that from happening obviously things happen things fall through the craps and that's in any space that you're in but generally speaking our goal is to make sure that hey whenever the buyers are signing their documents to buy that home they can be confident to know that if there are any liens or judgments or any issues with this property that by the time we say this transaction is funded that we're going to have a home free and clear and the only thing that's going to be on the home is the things that we put on the home which would be the mortgage that i have on this property and that's it right right nothing secret nothing behind nothing secret in and, back, yeah in the back door that you didn't see coming yeah and we're obligated like we have to it's a part of the contract we have to present you a copy of the commitment is what we call it um to show you what's on the property and you'll find that on what they call it's called schedule c like the the, the commitment is con it consists of four parts it's a b c and d and mm -hmm. so we typically whenever we have classes we'll call it the abcs of title commitments um but it actually lets you know that hey you know so when a buyer is buying a property they can see what all the seller has on the property so they can see that oh they got a mortgage oh they had a bankruptcy oh they got a judgment oh they was yeah. divorced oh they got this lawsuit like they can see all of it they because they're it's their right to see it and we have to furnish that to them within a certain time frame and so um uh, and we you know we, we, we as soon as we get it back we send it out to the party so they can review it with their realtors and if they have questions about it you know they can definitely call us and ask us and you know we'll have it to where they people are like are you want to make sure you're going to make sure that all this is clear like yes we're not going to close this stuff to close this file with these being on here and if we have an issue with getting what we need from the seller in order to get this file closed then we're not going to close we, we're going to make sure it's clear I'm glad you led into that <laughs> <laughs> and some people don't like to hear that but I'm like right. we're closing this file no we're yeah because it, it protests it protests you know all actually, parties involved yeah and, and the thing is this yes it may not be yours as the buyer you know who's pro who's buying the property but if you try to do anything with that property it's gonna come up and you can't do what you want to do with it because you're dealing with this issue yeah so I, normally so how long does it take for you guys to do your you know your background your what they call uh your title examinations search. and title searches yeah it, how long it typically does it usually take, take? um uh, i would say between two to three days um it okay. depends on what's going on. so it's it's fairly quick um and that's i would say two to three days in your um metropolitan city so you're talking about your dallas houston austin san antonio your big cities they come back really quickly okay. now your smaller cities or the smaller areas i do apologize looks like my light i was i guess i went moving around no that, no that's fine you have a <laughs> but um those um it takes about um it, it may take a little longer so you may you're looking at about seven days or even um maybe up to 10 days just kind of depends so once you go to the more rural towns, you're going to have um, likely a delay in getting the title documents back just because of just time. So even after that examination, you know, it's been times where, OK, all right, you did the title search, you did examinations, mm -hmm. nothing was found at the time. But getting close to closing time, oh, something may pop up. It's, yep. And then, it and then explain to the people, because, you know, the first person they're going to look at Hey, Mr. Loan Officer. Hey, what what's going on with the closing date? Yeah, why? Why? And I've had this happen too. Okay. So, um, we within three days of closing, standard practice for most title companies. I say within three days. Um, it may be five days. Just kind of depends on what that office is doing. But the the standard is within three days prior to closing, we'll do what we call a bring to date. And so, what a bring to date is is I need you to look at the property make sure nothing new has come up on the property prior to us closing well guess what i had a situation where it was um 
some sons, they were selling the property of their deceased mother. And what ended up happening is we did the bring today and we saw that there was a current court action pending. Well, okay. if the court action is pending, we cannot do anything with the property because it's affecting the property. And so we're not going to sell a property or close on the property. And it ends up being that these persons who are trying to sell the property didn't have right to sell the property. So in a situation like that, if something does come up on title, you know, within that time frame, and we, we've seen it happen, it can be a day before a title. It can be the day that you close it and it comes up. We have to get it taken care of. And, okay. you know, I know people don't like that. Obviously, we would hope that wouldn't happen. But at the same time, it's not on us. You know, I tell people we're, we didn't put it on, on the house. Right. Right. <laughs> it's something that the right. seller was doing or didn't do. And so. Right. But you're paying us. You're paying us to make, make sure that everything sure is, right. is good to go. Yeah, right. exactly. And so, you know, yes, it may be delayed. But at the same time, would you rather it be delayed or would you rather have a situation that is now going to end up being a huge court action and now you can enjoy living in your new home? Right. Okay. So once everything goes through, let's say it goes through closing, you know, uh -huh. close, all documents are signed. Are you still in? What, do you have any additional steps that you have to oh, man, finish yes. up? Oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're not done. We're not done. We're so, not done. So, for me, once, once it closed, I'm like, okay, phew. No, nah, we're not done. We're not done. We still got stuff to do. So once everything is closed, funded, everybody has their money. Sellers mm. have their money. Buyers have their keys. Everyone is happy. We have paid everybody. At this point, now we have to do what we call post-closing. So in post-closing, what we do is we run another search to make sure nothing else happened in the time that uh, we... So, I mean, in the time that the property is closed, the we three day have, check, and then you check it again right after. Yep, yeah, we check it again right after. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to move around. Hopefully, it pop back. Yeah, it pop back up, but it's not popping back up. So, oh, it popped back up. Great. Okay. <laughs> Even though I think the lighting was better when the lights were off. <laughs> energy efficient, though. You gotta have energy efficient. Um. So what ends up happening is um, we we're we are under, I would say, requirement. We need to record the documents. And the documents I'm speaking of, the warranty deed and deed of trust or any other recordable documents, we have to record that within 48 hours. So within two days of us closing or within 48 hours of us closing, we need to submit those documents for recording. The reason why we want to do it in the time frame is because Texas has first in line, first in time, which means let's say something happens and um the buyer or somehow some way the seller ended up selling the property to multiple people okay okay yeah and so but we didn't know it you know but you know we we did our foul but let's say we, we got this cricket seller out here and he's out here you know signing contracts with any and everybody and y'all don't think it's, it happens it happens it happens <laughs> yeah. I, i've, I've it heard the, i heard the horror stories about you know some cricket people able to yep. coordinate the closings on the same day. Yep. So it yep. will never get yep. caught. Yep. Yep. It, exactly. And they're just like, hey, they just getting money from everywhere. And we we don't know. We don't know if you had a contract over here at this other title company or over here. So let's say that happens and we're not the first to record our warranty deed, but the other party, the other title company records it, you know, within that time frame. So and sometimes it happens where we, you know, it may be recorded on the same day and time, you know, or, or close time. Obviously, the title insurance is going to cover that because that's too close in time to even be able to, um, to, to, to say that we won't cover it. So you, 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 we record it within 48 hours to say that, hey, we're, we were first in line. And so anybody that comes in behind us, they don't have a claim to this property or okay. If they come behind us, they know that, hey, we got to get paid first or we got our our right is superior than their rights. So don't even look at them without looking at our spurs. And so that's really key whenever you have a situation with a lender and a lender has their mortgage on the property. And let's say the buyer decides to get a second mortgage on the property that 
second mortgage knows that they won't be paid first if anything happens. They understand that, hey, it's the first mortgage don't get paid first, then the second mortgage gets paid. Wow. Okay. So after we record documents, get those back. Um, at that point, we're ready to issue what we call the title policy. Title policy is the insurance policy. Okay. Get the insurance policy. When it, there's a transaction involving a lender, the lender gets a title policy just as well as the owner gets the uh, title policy. If it's just a situation where there's no lender involved, cash transaction, the owner gets a policy. You have that title policy. It is active for so long as you own the property. Okay. So it does not expire. So it's a one-time fee. You know how with the other insurances, you have to pay sometimes monthly or yearly. Right. Not all insurance. One renewal. time fee, no you, don't pay it. You, you don't pay it again. Only time you pay it again is if you refinance the property. And then depending on, you know, there, there are some credits that you may be awarded if you close the property within a certain time frame from the original closing date. But generally speaking, the only time that you pay another title policy fee is if you refinance the property or if you sell the property. But Okay. It's so it's there, for, it's there for the life of the mortgage. It's there for the life of the mortgage. Okay. Good well, I'm sorry. It's the lender's policy is there for the life of the mortgage. The okay. owner's policy is there for as long as you own the property. I got you. Regardless of regardless of what happens okay hmm, okay so man i'm trying to think of any other so you know from from your experience mm -hmm. um is there anything else that you know you can tell the audience or tell consumers or loan officers um uh, anything else that you might want to share that maybe a lot of people don't know that maybe can help them get through the process uh, I, you know get more prepared for the process yeah one of the key things, and I'll say this to anybody, and, and I would say this is synonymous being on the lender side, you have to communicate with us. You have to communicate with um, your lenders. You have to communicate with title. When we're asking you for things, I know we, this is one of the pet peeves of loan officers. Like, if I'm asking you for documents, I need the documents now. Look, if you yeah, take those documents, you're going to delay the process. And there so, in understanding, we're all here for a common goal. We all want, believe me, we don't get paid until the home closes. Okay. So okay. we, you know, we're not here just for the paycheck, but we are definitely here to get you through the process and to make it as smooth as possible. And the way to make it as smooth as possible is you being communicative as, you know, an agent, you being communicative as a buyer and as a seller or any other party that may be involved in your transaction. Understand that title is not a part of the transaction, meaning that the requirements of that contract fall in along lines within the buyer and the seller, not with title. Title does assist in making sure that we gather most of all the information that's needed in order to get the file closed, but we definitely need your assistance. And so, um, yeah, I think I think it's really it's 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 hard for some people to understand that, but also too that you know we we're here to protect all parties like we, right. we say we're, we're the third party neutral we're not picking sides you know we just want to make sure that every, everything is done fairly everyone gets their money we're the fiduciary of those funds and so we're saying to y'all that hey your funds are entrusted with us once you deposit your funds with us we're going to disseminate those funds in the appropriate places and make sure things get paid um and you know at the end of the day th this should be a fun process it shouldn't be stressful especially over here at title title should not be stressful title should not be now if you got a lot of stuff on your property and you done got a lot of judgments it may not be it may not be nice but <laughs> right. just, but that's few and far in between those typically don't right. happen um i would say the majority if not 95 percent of their transactions are really smooth transactions um and you know the goal is to celebrate you know your huge accomplishment and that's you know right. having a home and owning a home even if it is your you know second or third home this is a big accomplishment you know this is a part of the really? dream is to you know own your own home and you know don't get discouraged you know when we're asking you for all this stuff um just know that we're just here to get us you know clothes and to get you in your new home okay 
that's good to hear because because we, we're all doing this for for the clients for the customers exactly it, it, the it's all that, you know especially in our community that's trying to build that generational wealth i mean that part it, it, the history has shown that you know real estate is going to produce good results and that's what i tell everyone you know that's why home ownership is so um, important so dear to my heart because we know that it's just something that comes along with it it's pride that right. comes with having homes and owning homes you know it was pride seeing your you know going to your grandma's house and actually having a house that was there right. and, and you know I, I would encourage like for persons who are listening that if you have you know those properties that grandma on don't want no one wants it keep it in the family y'all yeah, yeah. Like somebody yeah. y'all can just rent it out don't don't sell it don't sell it yeah it's they so easy to sell money. right yeah they they're not yeah. making no more land i would tell people don't look at the short game look at the long game how can this be beneficial to you in the long term keep keep that house you know find you some people right. who can help you do you know like give you brand new ideas and so forth but keep the house and and and, and keeping the family because you have to because you know real estate it, it they, they're not making no more land it right. is, is out here so we just need to keep it and um in regards to the, the the title insurance piece get title insurance don't let no one talk you out of get buying title insurance it's a small fee that can really pay off really really big right. if does come out and especially when you're buying older homes even newer homes but if, if, if you're buying property you need that protection period now, would you even would you even test the transaction if they don't buy the insurance i mean i'm not buying a property if title ain't involved right right so you know i and that's even a turn I, I i'm not i'm not assuming that right. risk you know e even if it's small you know it's worth it okay it's worth it so make sure you have title insurance on your property um understanding that you know even if you have situation where you are probably not selling a property but you know kind of going back to you know your grandparents home or your parents home and someone is deceased speak to an attorney to get that cleared up because a lot of people end up not um not knowing what the process is or how right. to do that and they have situation where there's been a death in the family and now yeah property and we have it come up so many times like literally we'll have properties where it's been in the family for over 40 50 years grandparents pat great and they split five ways <laughs> yeah and it's so. just they just like well you know we just contacted you know the the county and the county told us that all we needed to do was just tell them oh. to and it's like no no so when, when you say county and i didn't want to go down that rabbit hole to probate <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it could be one yeah that's it's a bit it's possible it's actually they should call it an elephant hole because yeah. it's huge yeah. that part that part yeah oh you got it 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 could be tough right <laughs> it can be tough and i always tell people you know you uh, and especially when you have a situation where, let's say, th there is someone who is remarried in the process and that they had kids, you had kids, and now everyone is like, well, what about that was my dad's property, that was my mom's house. Uh, so here we go. And, y'all, please get your papers together. And, you know, us attorneys, we are some of the worst about telling people to get their papers together because we're the last ones to do it. But get mm -hmm. your stuff in your own property if you know you want to give it to someone, there are things that you can do right now that whenever you pass there, you know, it automatically passes to your, you know, your beneficiaries of your wishes. And so I encourage people to speak to an attorney. Attorneys are not that expensive. You know, some even have free consultations, but when you're talking about property, especially once you've bought that property once you made that huge accomplishment in buying that home or getting that home don't stop there there are so many things you can do to protect your interests the interests of your children the interests of your spouse interests yes, of your yes, and, 
people don't think about that and sometimes it's too late it's too late you know, like i have a situation right now where the husband the 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 wife is still um alive but she married her husband who is now deceased but he had mm -hmm. kids prior to the marriage and mm -hmm. now we're trying to you know get they didn't have a will now we're trying to get all the kids together they can't find one of the kids and they don't think mm. okay. they, they don't think the kid is going to want to sell the property so it's just a huge thing and it's just like look um right and that's when the will comes in too you know we got to be we, we got to be clear on what we want the family you know exactly to do exactly um, exactly but, man so i don't want to i don't want thank you for all your time uh, yeah, i know you, we man. ran I, I know we ran over a little bit but it, uh -huh. it is one more question i do have to ask you and okay. that's related to you know just real estate professionals uh you know being that you you know you're communicating with both sides on, on the real yeah. estate side and on the lending side yeah. is there any additional is there training do you bring people into the office sit yes. them down and kind of you know sit sit us real estate professionals down to yes i do i do help, offer training help us help you. Um, yeah i'm I, I feel the more um personal training is supposed to just say like oh we're gonna do these big c ce's you know for everyone i'm more personable i would rather us you know get together so if you have any questions or if you or your office want training please contact us we, okay. we I love to teach i love to give new information and to help agents and help loan officers and processors just understand the process and you know understand what we're dealing over here on title side because we all can be in our own little bubble we all know what we do and right. we what we do but understanding how the process affects how what you do affects everything else in the process will be is would just make your job and make your transaction that more smoother it'll allow you to educate your clients so they'll know what to expect and we'll be able to meet everyone's expectations. But yes, if you would love to talk more or, you know, want training, you just reach no, out. Definitely. Love to do that. Definitely. I will take you up on that. That's I, I couldn't agree with you more. That's one of the reasons I did ask you to, to come on the show, not just to educate the audience, but for me to get more educated as well. Sounds so. good. I sure appreciate it. I would definitely be in touch. I need to stop, maybe stop by the office one of these days, you yeah. know, and, you know, maybe I could, you know, bring some realtors with me and. Exactly. Hell, you we, know, we're always ready and we, and, and we love to do business with you. So. Okay. So for the business also. So we appreciate everything you do, all the support and whatever we can do to help uh, you all, you let us know we're, we're, we're here for it. Okay. Thank you. I do that. And I set that up. Ooh, do I reach out to Tommy on that? To coordinate reach out. The... Okay. All I right. I definitely do that. Well, was All right. for having me. I thank you and I appreciate you. And uh, as soon as I finish the post-production of this uh, this video, I'll send the link right to you. All right. Sounds good. You have a good one, okay? All right. Well, I'll All be right. in touch. All right. Have thank bye. you. Bye. Up.